Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. If you are new here, I do video tutorials on how to use and set up websites on AWS LightCell, Azure, and other web hosting tools and services. Uh, I also do WordPress tips and tricks. So if you are a beginner in the web dev world, especially WordPress, and or you are interested in this type of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel for future videos. In uh, today's video, uh, we will walk through eight steps on securing your WordPress website. Uh, most of these steps or changes that we'll make are in the WP config. And uh, surprisingly enough, these are not set uh, by default to be secure. So if you um, if you built your website on WordPress or if you built a site for your client or for anyone else um, using WordPress recently, then check these settings out and make sure you've applied them to your production site. Before we walk through or before you go through making all of these changes on your site, uh, make sure you take a backup of the WP config and also take a backup of your WordPress database. Uh, because we will be making one change to your uh, database structure as part of one of these steps. So, so back up both the WP config um, and your WordPress database before making these changes, because if anything should go wrong, you'll have a way to restore uh, both of those items and get your website back up and running. And I probably also suggest if you have a development website, um, then try to do these on the dev site first. And then if everything looks and works fine, then you can do those to your production sites. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the very first security item that we will cover is moving the uh, wp-config.php uh, file outside of its uh, default installed location uh, over to a more secure location. So if you typically look at a uh, WordPress installation, the wp-config file, and while I go into my sample WordPress site, the wp-config file is installed at the root of your public folder. And uh, for a Bitnami-based installation, that will be in uh, apps, WordPress, htdocs. So if you look inside here, you'll see that wp-config.php file, file is located here. Now, this file, as you all know, uh, will have a lot of sensitive information, including your database connection details, your security keys. So it's, you know, it's important that this be a very secure file. Um, WordPress does uh, a good job of making sure that this file can't be accessed from the web just by typing in the URL but we can take it a one step further and additionally secure it by moving it outside of the um, public folder and moving it into uh, a non-public folder. The easiest way to do this, if you have a Bitnami-based uh, WordPress installation, uh, especially on LightCell, the easiest way to do it is to move this file outside of the directory. So basically, if you're here in uh, the HD docs where the WordPress installation has been made, you could just say move wp-config.php and just move it one level up. Uh, well, it gives me a permission denied. So one thing that you do have to do is anytime you're moving files outside of a public folder, uh, you'll have to do that with a bit of an elevated privilege. Uh, you'll need to do sudo move wp-config.php and one level high. So once you've done that, if you now still come back to your WordPress site, um, it should still work because it is automatically checking. Uh, WordPress automatically looks for that file um, in the local, in the root folder of where WordPress is installed. If it can't find the file there, then it will look for that file in a directory one level above. So you don't have to do anything more than just this if you're using the Bitnavi based uh, installation. If your WordPress is on a different web host or maybe a shared hosting platform, you may have to do a few extra steps and I will link those down below or, or point you to an article or two that can uh, give you some direction on what to do if your 
uh, let's say shared hosting um, uh, service provider is uh, restricting some some permissions and things like that. So, but if you are using LightSail and if you're using especially a Bitnami based installation, even not on LightSail, you should be able to do this. Um, now let's head on to our second tip. So tip number two will be to rename the default WP underscore prefix on your WordPress database tables. So to do that, we'll open up the WP config again, config.php file. And then if you scroll down towards the bottom of this file, you'll have the WordPress database table prefix. So here you'll want to change this to something else. Uh, WP underscore is the default, what comes with the WordPress installation, but you can change this to anything else that, you know, is more appropriate for your website. So we could say something like just very random, something like that, right? 1122 CSG is what I need. Then go ahead and save this. Now, once you have done this, you do have to go and rename all of the database tables that uh, are part of your website. So for that, we'll need an application tool like PHP My Admin. Um, I've done videos on how to set up or install PHP My Admin uh, in one of my previous videos. You can check that out or uh, uh, have tried some of the application frameworks that we went through in the past couple of videos. CapRover is one of them. Uh, that has a one-click uh, application install for PHP My Admin on your server. Then uh, RunCloud is also another good platform uh, management tool that installs uh, PHP My Admin with one click. So go ahead and check those out if you don't have PHP My Admin installed. But if you do, uh, you'll want to log into PHP My Admin. And you'll notice these are the default WordPress tables and they're all named uh, WP underscore as a prefix. So what you want to do here is select all. So come over here and click on uh, your database and then click on check all. So it highlights or selects all of the tables that are within your database. Under this action menu item, you'll want to come here and say replace table prefix. So you'll want to put the existing one here, so WP underscore, and then you'll want to replace it with what we put our prefix in the WP config. So 1122 CSG underscore, and then you'll want to uh, continue with that. Once it processes all the tables, you'll see that they're all now labeled with 1122 CSG underscore, and this way this just adds a additional layer of security in case uh, people or hackers are trying to uh, establish um, any kind of uh, cross-site scripting or SQL injection or any other type of method of trying to get into your site, they won't know uh, what table names you have. So this is an added layer of security and highly recommend it for any WordPress uh, website. Now let's head on to tip number three. So this next uh, security tip involves uh, updating the WordPress security keys and salt. These keys, so if you open up your wp-config.php file, you'll see this section right here, which starts with authentication, unique keys, and salts. You'll see about eight um, keys uh, or eight uh, configuration options with randomly generated keys right here. These keys are used for encrypting your cookies that your website uses, as well as your passwords. When you first install WordPress, uh, these keys will be automatically generated for you and saved. So you really don't have to worry about this on brand new installations. And now if you do feel like your website has been compromised or perhaps your username or passwords have been leaked or compromised, then what you'll want to do is of course, in addition to changing your username and password in, in the WordPress uh, database, you'll want to come in here and quickly regenerate these keys. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, recently have installed WordPress and you don't feel like your site's compromised, you probably want to come in here every so often and regenerate these keys just as an added layer of security. And uh, regenerating them is very simple, and uh, I'll show you that right now. So if you are in the WP config, they actually provide you the link where these keys can be regenerated. Do not try to uh, get keys from any other site. Make sure that you're getting them from the official 
uh, site where the keys are generated. So right here, uh, you can generate these keys using this link. So we'll copy this link into our browser. Uh, actually, I do have one already here. So when you load the URL into a browser, you'll get those same eight uh, keys that are available that you see in your WP config. So every time you refresh this URL, a new set of keys are generated. So you can easily just click refresh and it will generate a new set of keys. Once you, you know, maybe I've clicked at it a couple of times, just copy the entire um, eight lines of uh, keys, replace the existing keys on in your WP config file. Uh, now, do keep in mind, as I mentioned, once you do replace these, all your cookies get invalidated. Also, your users will have to re-log in. But this is a, a good practice to do every now and then, just as an added layer of maintenance and security, uh, security hardening, basically. So I'm just going to come in here, delete the existing keys, insert the new set of keys. And once you've done that, just save out of it, and that's it. Now we'll go on to tip number four. Uh, tip number four involves uh, maybe a pre-activity before you attempt to set this setting. Um, I've done a couple of videos or uh, most of our WordPress installations now should have HTTPS or an SSL certificate installed for your website. Uh, Let's Encrypt is a good way to get a free SSL certificate. So really there's no reason for any website to not be under HTTPS nowadays you'll want to add these two um, security settings in your WP config. I will copy and paste them and show you where to put them. If you open up your WP config, insert uh, these two commands. The first one is force SSL admin. What this will do is make sure that whenever anyone, including you, are logging into the WP admin dashboard, you're doing so um, using SSL. Uh, that way that any uh, communication including logging in to the WP admin uh, all of that information is encrypted and there's no way anyone can intercept that activity and gain access to your website so you'll want to do that uh, at force SSL admin and set that to true and also define force SSL login and set that to true now, what this second one does for SSL login, so if you have a WordPress site where there are users logging into your site, for example, like a membership-based site or a WooCommerce, e-commerce-based site, uh, then you'll want to force SSL login so that the login page itself can only be served under SSL or HTTPS. So make sure by default all of your WordPress sites should have force SSL admin and force SSL login always set to true. But before that, make sure you do have a certificate and I have some videos that walk you through on how to generate those or install those using uh, Let's Encrypt. I'm going to go on to tip number four because I'm right there on, in the WP section that I wanted to talk to you about. So tip number, uh, actually, uh, actually tip number five is uh, making sure that your production website always has this setting WP underscore debug uh, set to false. In addition to security, I think it's also a performance uh, improvement but only enable WP debug to true if you are troubleshooting some issues on your WordPress site or if you are looking for some information. So any production site should always have that set to false. And I think uh, this is a Bitnami WordPress installation, so they by default set that to false. Uh, if you are on a dev site then and you're trying to look for some debug information, then you may want to come and check and make sure this is not set to false for your development site. But once you push to production, uh, just set that to false. Uh, then let's head on to tip number six. Okay, so tip number six is going to be a setting that um, for some reason, WordPress still allows this um, even today, and I don't know anybody that actually uses this feature, but it's basically a, a file edit feature. So you actually can modify uh, theme files as well as plugin files through the WP admin dashboard. We shouldn't use it. It's actually a very it's a bad security uh, risk. Um, so this setting, again, it's in your WP config. 
and uh, so open that up and add this right below here and it's called disallow file edit and set that to true now there's also a another setting that you could also do so that you can actually disallow plugin updates or theme updates through the WP admin. Now, typically, if you log into your dashboard, you'll see um, at the top notification that you have uh, updates to plugins or themes. We can actually disable that. And if you are building sites that are that need to be very secure, then you can add this additional layer of security, which will disable uh, any kind of updates through the dashboard. So then that means that you would have to do that, those updates by uploading the plugin files or uploading the theme files from uh, using SFTP or some other file transfer mechanism. If you need that level of security, then the next setting here, disallow file mods and set that to true. So once you do that, you can't make any changes through the WP admin. Now let's head on to our last tip. Okay, so this eighth and last tip um, is also a, a bit of an extreme and not all websites apply this. And this setting is, and I'll paste it right here and then we'll talk through it. WP underscore HTTP underscore block external. So what this will do is block uh, any of your scripts from communicating outbound to any external third party servers. Updates, uh, dashboard feeds, um, license activations for paid plugins and themes, a lot of that will be uh, turned off along with any other activity. So if, if a malicious script got installed on your server and it was sending data out to a hacker server, even those kind of things are blocked. And that's mainly what this kind of security setting is meant for. There is a way to whitelist um, any of these, uh, any of the valid domains or valid services that you still want to have happen. For example, plugin needs to request out to a, a website to activate the license, then you'll want to whitelist that. You also want to whitelist a lot of the WordPress APIs. So if you see on the second line, you can define accessible hosts that are allowed to make outbound calls. And so by default, I put in here asterisk.wordpress.org. So anything related to WordPress activity will not be blocked, as well as github.com. And you could add uh, any other sites or hosts that uh, need outbound connectivity. At least this way, you know what's going to make outbound calls. This is a good security um, a step to do. And um, but make sure that you are whitelisting or allowing, you know, hosts that you need so that your site at least functions properly. So these are the eight security tips um, that I know of. Uh, and these are mo mostly these were focused on WP config. Now, there are some other security tips that you could do um, in other areas of WordPress. And I think I'll cover that in another video. Uh, but if you've uh, found these useful or if you know any other security tips that should be applied to WP config, please comment down those below. If you did find uh, this useful and, and some of these security tips are helping you out, uh, please hit that like button, share this with others and uh, consider subscribing to my channel so that uh, I can reach my goal of a thousand subscribers. Um, so until next time, take care.